it is good to see y'all here this morning. Um, just a couple of quick announcements. Um, as you can tell, Pastor's not here this morning. Him and Miss Beth are, they are feeling better, uh, just not well enough to be here this morning. So do keep them in your prayers. Also keep Mrs. Alton in your prayers. She had to go to the hospital yesterday. Um, they weren't 100% sure, um, but so keep her in your prayers. And then also, um, next Sunday, we will be receiving our annual Thanksgiving offering. And this offering goes is uh, not our regular offering, it's above and beyond uh, the regular offering. And it will be going towards um, the building fund. So be praying with the Lord. We will be having you give for that. And we, again, we'll be receiving that um, next Sunday morning. And I believe that is all the announcements. So we're going to go ahead... What about uh, Victoria? Um, she is doing well. She's doing well. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. So, but she's doing good. Not yet. Um, so we're going to go ahead and stand. We will go ahead and shake hands, greet everyone this morning. Uh, did you have a first? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's stand and turn him 451. <laughs> offering that we can use to further your work here and Lord just be with the services to come these things we ask in Jesus name Amen, Amen.
this morning and we're going to go to a couple of different places. First place we're going to look at is Matthew 14 and then we will head over to Mark chapter 4. But first Matthew 14. Matthew chapter 14. first place we're going to look at and then we'll go over to Mark here in a minute but Matthew 14 and we're going to start reading in verse 22 Matthew 14 verse 22 and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out with fe for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him, and said, Lord, if, that, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the winds boisterous, he was afraid, and being, being to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, and caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they, and when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased, and they that were in the ship came and worshipped, saying, of, the, of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Now go to Mark chapter 4. <coughs> Mark chapter 4. Mark 4 and verse 35. Mark 4, 35. And the same, in the same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, they took him even as was in a ship, 
and there was also with them with him other little ships and there arose a great storm of wind and waves and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full and when the hinder part of the ship and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they awake him and they said uh, say unto him master carest thou not that we perish and he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea and said unto the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm and he said unto them where why art thou so fearful how is it that ye have no faith and they feared exceedingly and said one to another what manner of man is this that even the wind and sea obey him this morning we're going to look at um sailing sailing the storms with jesus sailing in the storms with jesus and in uh both cases here in matthew and in mark we have two different situations two different storms arise and you know with the way things have been going the past few weeks you know from the election and and just stuff going on in the world you know it kind of get i kind of get the feeling or sense that i don't want to say a storm's brewing because i don't want to sound like i don't have faith and i don't want to sound fearful and i don't want to sound fear-mongering but it it it, it kind of gets that sense like a, like a storm is building the storm is coming and and i've said it before one of the things i like about living in florida especially in the summertime and then as weird as it may sound i like watching the summer storms build mm. you know i like i like watching the the clouds just start to build and everything and it's i don't know i don't know what it is uh, that, that i like so much about it but i just i find it i find it fascinating just to watch the the storm start to build and start to to come together and everything and all of a sudden you know it'll start raining and it'll start storming and then we you know living here in florida we know it'll last 20 minutes and then it's back to normal Florida weather. It's hot, humid, muggy, and everything else. You know, and then, uh, you know, this week with the, the, the tropical storm that came through, you know, it would have been interesting to watch that, the, the, the storm build and to come. And in life, it's not, it's not fun to watch storms in our life begin to build. You know, it's, it's, it's in no way, shape, or form fun of any sort. To say, I see how this is going, and I see what's coming, and I know this is going to be bad, I know it's not going to be good. That is in no way fun to watch. But here in, and in Matthew and in Mark, neither one of these storms the disciples seen coming. You know? And I don't, for, for chronological order's sake, I don't know which storm came first. Okay, I'll, I'll admit, I don't know whether the one in Mark happened first or if the one in Matthew happened first. I just know that, you know, both occasions... Uh, before these storms came, the disciples had been with Jesus for a while. And in Matthew, Jesus had been preaching. And Jesus had actually, if you were to go back and, and read just before we started reading, and it was about verse 21 or 22, I believe, you would see Jesus had just finished feeding the 5,000. And the disciples had witnessed uh, a, a great miracle there with the 5,000. Because if you remember, Jesus, when he seen the multitude, there earlier in, in, in Matthew, he had told the, the disciples to make the people sit. And the people sat, and Jesus said, okay, now we're going to feed them. And they began to look around, and they said, Jesus, even 300 pence worth, 300 penny worth, if we, we were to get that much together, we wouldn't have enough to feed these people. But we seen the little boy there that had five loaves and two fishes, and he brought them forth. And, and, and Jesus blessed it and, and used that and, and performed that great miracle. And now in the disciples have been told, the Bible says that Jesus constrained them. Jesus literally was, was forcing them and begging them to get into the ship. Because Jesus wanted to go off by himself to have time to pray. And in Matthew, we see that the disciples, uh, you know, they're, 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 they're in the ship and a storm comes. And I don't believe this was the first time the disciples had seen in either situation, in Matthew or in Mark. I don't believe it was the first time the disciples had seen a storm. You know, if you remember, several of the disciples are actually fishermen. They they get they spend a lot of time on boats. You know, and if and I've joked around before saying, you know, I would love to, I, I love to fish. You know, but I I don't have any idea how to do commercial fishing like they did. I I would have no idea how to do it. My idea of fishing is going down to the river or something and sitting down with a rod and reel. 
and, and spending time. I love, <coughs> as I say, I love drowning worms. I, love, I just love drowning worms or crickets or whatever I got. And I could catch nothing, and I'm going to have fun the whole time I'm there, you know. Yes. But to, to, you know, make a living, if you were to put pressure on me and say, okay, now you've got to make a living on it, I'd, I'd find a way. But I wouldn't have any idea if I were to go down to, to the Gulf and get on one of these commercial boats that goes out and fishes. I wouldn't have thing one to do. I, would, I wouldn't know thing one what to do if all of a sudden a storm came. Mm. I, I'll be honest, I would probably be like the disciples. I would, I would be afraid to be on a boat. You know, because I've seen enough movies to know what happens when, when, when a storm comes and you're on a boat, right? You know, Dakota, the, earlier yesterday we were watching uh, a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving with Dakota. And in and, and the one little sh uh, episode of it, there, uh, it's Charlie Brown's perspective of how the pilgrims came over to America and someone gets knocked off the boat and that during the storm. That would be me. I would I would be that one guy that would just happen to get knocked into the water during a storm and, and I would I would be afraid, you know. But these weren't you know, it, it wasn't a storm that the disciples were used to. It wasn't something they had ever expected. Because I imagine again being fishermen, they've sailed in a storm before. They they've been on rough seas before. But in both situations, if you look at it, they were afraid in both situations. And when storms come in our life, they can be scary. They can, they can be rough. No matter how many times you may have gone through a storm before, for some reason or another, this one's not like anything else you've experienced before. And, it, and, it, and you're fearful and you're afraid. And so I'm going to take a look at this morning again, uh, sailing with Jesus in the storm. The first thing I want to look at is that Jesus has a plan in the storm. And, you know, look at, uh, we're in Mark, we'll go ahead and look there first, but look at verse uh, 35. In the same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they, and, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he, he, even as he was in a ship, and there was also other little ships with them. And then back in Matthew chapter 14, Matthew 14, verse 22. And straight, straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. Now, both situations, Jesus has... And, and here in Matthew, the, the first thing we see with, with this particular situation is Jesus had told the disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side. He didn't tell them to get in the ship and say... As, 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 as humorous as I would find it, he didn't say, you fellas might make it to the other side. You know, and, and if you look in Mark, the Bible says, Mark 35, at the end of verse 35, it says, let us pass over into the other side. Jesus had, had told them in both situations his plan. And his plan was for them to be on the other side. Yeah. You know, he didn't say, again, you know, as, as jokingly as I would find it, he didn't say, you guys are going to go before me and you might make it over to the other side. You know, he didn't say, we're going to get in the ship and I'm going to, we're going we're to get out here and we're going to sink. He said, in Matthew, he said, go to the other side. He told them to go. And then in, in Mark, he said, let us pass over to the other side. In both situations, in, in, in both storms, Jesus had told them they were going to make it through. If they'd have been listening, I think they'd have, you know, and I can't blame the disciples. I've, I've been that way before. You know, I, I don't always fully listen when the Lord tells me something either. You know, when, when, when something said, I don't, I don't fully listen. But he had told them, let us pass over to the other side. You know, Jesus knew exactly when both these storms were going to arrive. You know, and I can... I imagine being in, in, in Matthew, you know, the disciples of, again, experienced fishermen and stuff, they're sailing, the storm comes, and the Bible says that when they, they first see Jesus, it's at about the fourth watch, which, doing a little bit of research, that's between midnight and two o'clock, roughly around when the fourth watch would have occurred. And 
They, the Bible says, you know, that they seen Jesus as, as walking on the water, but they didn't know it was Jesus. And the Bible says that they thought it was a spirit, you know. But Jesus knew exactly in both situations when the storm was going to come. You know, it didn't take him by surprise. And that's, that's something that even, you know, I can't wrap my mind around. And, I, and I, you know, that nothing has ever caught Jesus by surprise. Mm -hmm. I get caught by surprise all the time, you know. I, with, with, you know, things going on, you know, with the election, I'm not going to lie. It caught me a little by surprise to see what was going on. But it didn't take Jesus by surprise at all. He didn't sit, he wasn't sitting there in heaven like we were sitting by the TV watching the, the results come in. Jesus wasn't sitting there in heaven going, man, I don't know if this is really going to happen. You know, I'm not going to lie. I got so annoyed with stuff at work that I just, I started avoiding, because there's different areas at work where there's TVs on at work, I would purposely walk away in the long way around the building just so I wouldn't have to look at the TV. Because one, I didn't want my I didn't want my anxiety to build up, you know, and be like, man, what's going on? Yeah. What's really happening, you know? I, I, you know, I got to a point where I just, I didn't, I wasn't even going on Facebook or nothing because it was like, you know what? Nothing's happened, nothing new. I don't want to sit here and worry, you know? That it caught me, it catches, it caught us by surprise. We may have been caught by surprise, but nothing has ever happened in, in, in the history of time that Jesus was like, "Well, I didn't see that one coming." <laughs> you know, there was never been a situation where he was like, I, "I wasn't expecting that." He has always been in total control. He's always known what was going to happen. And the thing, and it, and it caught me, you know, by surprise when I was reading these both these passages and studying it. The Lord showed me something. He put the disciples in both those situations. Yes. He, he, he put the disciples where they were supposed to be. He put them in the midst of rough seas. You know, he didn't, he didn't say, you know what, fellas, I'm sorry this happened. I, I, I should have been there. No, he purposely sent them there. There was a reason for them being there. You know, Jesus had a plan throughout this the, the whole point of the storm you know both storms again we've seen in in, in Matthew the storm the, the the disciples are I I'm gonna again they're fearful this is a storm that is, is has come up they weren't expecting it and it's dark and when things are happening at night you know it makes it it's hard to, to see you know when when the the tropical storm came through the other night I was driving home on the way from work I drove home a little bit slower than normal because I couldn't see as well with the way the wind was blowing and the wind and the rain was coming down, I couldn't see as well. You know, I didn't I didn't want anything to, to be caught by surprise. So I was a little more cautious. I was a little more careful. I imagine the disciples are the same way with this storm. They're being more cautious, more careful, but unlike I didn't I you know, driving in my van during this storm, I didn't have any fear. I would have fear of being on a boat, being on experience. And Nathaniel Nathaniel a couple of weeks ago did a message uh, also out of Mark and Nathaniel made a good point that's something I never thought of you know there might have been a disciple that was actually afraid of the water you know and now they're they're in this storm they're in they're, they're in a storm and you know I can in and I in my mind it plays of the, they're hanging on to to the master or whatever that that one particular disciple whoever he was that's afraid he's going I told you guys this is why I didn't like sailing you know, he's, he's, he's going on and on and, and you know I, this is why I don't like the water I knew this was going to happen you know but and, and no matter what the situation is Jesus is Jesus has put you in that situation in life no matter what it will be you know there, there is a reason for that and in with the, the example in Matthew the storm in Matthew right the fourth watch again the fourth watch being between midnight and 2 a.m. and about that point in time you know that is the body's natural point when the body is most tired between that point in time is when the body uh, when, when you're sleeping that is when you begin to get your your most restful sleep if you're if you're sleeping well during that time because your body is at its its natural lowest point and, and it's most exhausted and from working, I you know working overnights before, that was the time frame I hated. That was that was the time frame I hated because no matter how much I had slept the day before, 
I was still so tired at that at two o'clock in the morning. You know, no matter how much coffee or whatnot I had had, I was tired. You know, and your your brain, or at least my brain does when I'm tired. My brain begins to play tricks on me, and I begin to see things at times. You know, especially at night. You know, whether it's it, you know, I'll see something. Uh, you know, I'll be looking. And I'll see something move out of the corner of my eye, and my brain says it's someone, someone's gotten in the building. You know, work in security, that's exactly what it is. You know, I'm in a secure building. There's only, you know, you got to have a, a card access to get in there and everything. You got to have a biometric scan to get in through the building and everything. The building's pretty secure, but when I'm tired and my brain is beginning to play tricks on me and something moves, someone's gotten in that building somehow, and I'm all by myself, and I have no way to defend myself in this building. And I'm going to be found laying in by myself in this building in, in a heaped up pile, you know. That's, that's what my brain begins to tell me, right? The disciples are on a boat, and they're sailing, and they're being tossed about. And all of a sudden, there's just something on top of the water walking. And I would do the same thing they did, right? Look at Matthew 14. Matthew 14, verse 25. Matthew 14, verse 25, it says, and, it, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. I don't know about y'all, but if I'm on a boat, and all of a sudden there's just something upright walking to me on the water... <coughs> I'm going to freak out a little bit, okay? I, you know, again, I've seen stuff, right? I, I, that's the funny thing with the internet, right? We've seen enough stuff on the internet, you know. I would be that one person that would be, it is, I would be them. It is a spirit. It is something coming for us. We're going to die. We're going to be, we, we were, Jesus is not here. He, he, he left us. He knew this was going to happen, right? Jesus Jesus knew there's that, that that's what the disciples start telling themselves, right? Especially the one guy who's afraid of the boat. Jesus did this on purpose. He knew there was going to be something coming for us in the middle of the night. He left us here to die. We're going to drown. It's going to get us, you know? I, they're beginning to get afraid, right? And don't we get the same way when we're going through our storm and we're starting to get tired in that storm? You know, and it's it's been a rough battle so far through that storm. And through that time of life, and we start doing the same thing. We start beginning fearful, and we start saying, "Lord, you you brought me in this thing to to leave me here to fail. You 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 you've abandoned me, right? Our mind starts to tell us that. Satan starts to creep his way in. And he starts to say, "Why would a caring, loving God who who loves you put you in a situation like this? Set you up for failure." Why would he abandon you like this and leave you? And now you're you're going to have to face this thing, and it's a sink or swim situation. And guess what? You ain't going to make it to the other side because I know you ain't going to make it. I know I know how you are. I know I can get you to to to, to, to sink in this situation. I know I can cause you to the, the doubt and fear. We're the same way, you know. And and we have, you know, we we, we look at it and it's like, man, the disciples are so afraid they don't need to be, but we're. We're the same way. You know, and, and look at the one, look at Matthew, or not Matthew, Mark, but the storm in Mark. Verse 37, Mark 4. <coughs> <coughs> and there arose a great storm of wind and waves and beat into the ship so that it was now full. And, in the, and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And, and the one in Mark, right, Jesus had been, again, had been preaching all day. Jesus said, listen, guys, we're going to the other side. I'm going to go lay down for a little bit. I'm tired. I want to go rest. And this storm comes, and it's and as the Bible describes it, it's it's so bad that it's starting to sink the ship. The Bible says that, the, that at the end of verse 37, that the waves beat into the ship so it, that it was now full. Water was coming up over the edge of the ship and is starting to sink the ship and they run to Jesus and they go Jesus hey Jesus right when I have to wake up Dakota in the morning sometimes I, 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 I don't want to be mean to Dakota 
So I, I'll be kind, I'll be sweet to him, and I'll, and I'll, you know, Dakota, you know, I'll start saying his name, I'll start kind of nudging him a little bit, you know, just trying to get him to wake up, because he can wake up like me sometimes, and I wake up kind of grumpy at times, you know, I wake up as a bear sometimes, you know, and I don't, I don't want him to wake up that way, so I'll gently try to get him awake, you know, I, the other morning, Dakota come in to wake me up, and he, the way he woke me up was like I was having a heart attack, and he began to get me CPR. Daddy! I mean, he did. He come in and planted both his hands right on my chest. Daddy! That's how he woke me up the other morning. And you, I, you know, I was. I'm awake. I'm awake. I, I, you know, that's I, that's what I told him. I said, I'm awake. You know, I was. I let him know I'm awake. Right? The disciples, when they came to Jesus, weren't going. Jesus, Jesus, I know, I know you've been busy all day, but it's kind of bad. We're starting to go down. No, they went to the back and they went, Jesus, we're drowning. We're dying. Don't you care? They, that, that's how they went to him. <coughs> but throughout all of that, throughout both these situations, Jesus was present. Jesus, even though Jesus had put the disciples in that situation, right? And the disciples are, are, are fearing and are afraid. Jesus was still present during those storms. Again, in, in Mark, Jesus was present even though he, 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 was, he was on the boat with them and asleep. He's still present. He was still there with them. They shouldn't have, you know, and I, I can look at him and I can judge it and say, you know, they shouldn't have been afraid. Jesus was there with them. But I'm the same way. I'm the same way. You know, I know... What, what Hebrews 13, 5 says that he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake me. I know that the Bible, what the Bible says in Psalms that I can go to Jesus and hide to him, that he can, is the shelter in the time of storm. He's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's there. He's present for me. I know all this, right? I have all that. And I know this in my head. But when I'm in the midst of something, it's hard to remember that because I'm looking at what's going on around me. It, it's hard to remind myself to say, hey, just, just breathe, relax, it's going to be okay. Jesus is here with you. You haven't been left. You haven't been abandoned. You know, it's, it's hard for me to remember that at times. You know, and then in, in, in Matthew, he came walking to them on the water. And, in, 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 you know, he, he, he presented himself and said, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm your beacon of hope. I'm here. I'm walking to them on the water. And Jesus even told him in Matthew, uh, verse 27, But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. He told them that they didn't need to have fear. And in our storms and in our situations, it's the same thing. Jesus has said the same thing to us that he, he told the disciples, Be not afraid, be of good cheer, it is I. I am here with you. I am going to help you through this. You know, and it's, it is such, you know, being, being saved and being a Christian, it is, it is so good to know that Jesus is present during those storms, during the hard times. You know, it's, it is so, it is such a comfort to me to know that it's, it's something I don't have to face on my own. It's not something that I have been left to, to figure out on my own and Jesus it was like it wasn't like Jesus said here's a twenty dollar bill here best of luck to you man you can do this you know Jesus didn't do anything like that he said listen I know how things look I know how the situation around you present itself but look at me focus on me and I and I'll help you get you through you know and I love I love Peter's example of faith he shows in in Matthew verse uh, Matthew 14 verse 28 and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. I can imagine being, right, being the disciples in that storm. And all of a sudden I hear this, be of good cheer, it is I. And then Peter goes, if it's you, let me come. Right? I'm that one who's afraid of the water going, Peter, are you nuts? Mm. You're going to, don't you see what's going on around you? I mean, look at the, the, the water. I mean, you're, you're going to step out of the boat and you're going to die, Peter. You're going to drown. 
But Peter shows the faith, and Peter says, Lord, if it's you, let me come. And Jesus said, water's fine, man. Let's go. And Peter got out of the boat, and Peter began to walk on water and walk to Jesus. Now, if I were any of the other disciples, I would have said, Lord, let me come too. Right? Let, let me do this. Like, let, let me come to you. You know, let me, let me have the faith that Peter's got, Lord. Let me come to you as well. And in, in, in storms at times, we can, I find myself being envious. Being like, Lord, why can't I be like them? Why can't I be like, 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 like so-and-so who's gone through something similar? They, they seem to do it with so much ease. You know, but here I am, it's, it's up over my head. I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what's going on. I can't figure it out. Why can't I be like them? And the reason is simple. I can't be like that because I don't have the faith that that person had. In any type of situation in life, no matter what it may be, right? No matter who, I mean, you, you fill in the blank, right? Faith is going to be the thing that helps you the most through anything. Faith being the thing that, as the Bible finds it, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, Hebrews 11, verse 1. Faith is that one thing that is going to carry you through. For we walk by faith, not by sight. And that's the part that's hard for me to grasp a lot of times. Is that faith is, I, I can't see. And I and I want to see. I want to know what's going on. I want to be, I want to... It's, it's Lord, I want to, I, I want to do it. I want to take that step, but I just, I can't, I don't, I don't want to put my foot out there and I don't want to fall. I don't want to take that step of faith and start just to sink right down and plunge down. Lord, I want to follow you. I want to trust you. I want to believe you, but I just, I just, I can't, I can't bring myself to take that step. And as, as Jesus said, we got to be more like Peter got to be more like Peter and say, Lord, let me come to you. Peter, in that moment, forgot about the storm around him. Forgot about the wind, forgot about the waves, forgot about the water, forgot about the cries of, of, of his friends. His main focus, his, his focus said that he was a horse with blinders. He said, Lord, I'm coming to you. That's all I see is you, Lord. And we have to be that same way. We have to be, Lord, all I see is you. Forget the situation around me. I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. I'm, I'm, I'm following you. And, and I'm going right to you. You know, and that's that's how we have to be. You know, and, and, in, that, and in the storms, we in both situations, we see Jesus show up and do what only he can do. You know, and, and in Matthew, when Peter starts walking to, to the Lord... And then we see that Peter begins to become afraid. Verse uh, 30, Matthew 14. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And then in Mark 4, verse 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind in the sea. And he, and he said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and, the wind, and, there, was, and there was a great wind. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Both situations, both storms, right? The Lord said the same phrase. Why didn't you have any faith? You know, Peter, it's... Peter's the only other person in, 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 in the history of mankind besides Jesus to walk on the water. You know, and Peter's going to the Lord and following the Lord, but Peter got afraid because Peter began to lose his focus. You know, Peter began to, to lose his focus on the Lord. And in, in, in Mark, the disciples, they lost focus. That The fact that Jesus had said, in verse 35, he said, let us pass over to the other side. The disciples have lost that focus. And I and, I, and and again I can't I can't be too hard on the disciples because I'm the same way. Right? Because I may start to feel like I'm making headway in my storm. And I, I'm beginning to focus on the Lord and all of a sudden I lose my focus. 
And I'm like Peter, and Lord, save me. And Jesus does what he does, and he saves me. He helps me, brings me through, and he says, where was your faith? Again, faith is, is something that, because it's something that I can't physically grasp, I can't physically hold it, I have some, that's, that makes it hard for me at times, because it's like, Lord, I know you're here, I know you're there, but it would be so much better for me if I could actually physically see you, hold you, grasp you. It would make things so much better. It would, it would be so much easier. But because I can't grasp him, hold him physically, I have to still trust him. I still have to still rely on him and still say, Lord, I know you're going to get me through the storm. And, 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 and it, it, the, the verse, in, sorry, in, in Mark, the storm, Jesus simply said, peace be still. And the storm just stopped. Right? And it was something the disciples had never seen. Because in verse 41, the Bible says, And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and sea obey him? Right? A storm they'd never seen before, and Jesus just simply says, Peace be still. And the storm that was going on, all of a sudden, gone. I mean, just stillness. Peace, calming. And they said, Who is this guy? That even the winds and seas obey. And I'm reminded that when I'm in my storms, as, as, as Psalms tells us, be still and know that I am God. Just, and, and, and this is one of those things that's easier said than done. But when things just seem to be overwhelming you and you, 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 don't, you don't know what to do, be still. And listen for the still small voice of the Lord. And that is one of the hardest things for me to do. Is just to, to stop fearing. To stop fretting. To stop worrying. And just to, to, to be still and listen to the Lord. And that, that's hard for me to do. But when, when, Jesus, when Jesus showed up and just said peace be still. That storm was gone. Just as quickly as it had come up, it was gone just as fast. And when Jesus shows up in our storms and in our life and he says, peace be still, they're gone just that fast. But we can have one of two reactions to our storms in life. We can be like the disciples and say, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Lord, don't you, don't you care about me? Don't you, don't you love me? Why have you left me here to, to be abandoned in this storm? Or we can be like Peter and say, Lord, I'm coming to you. And we can begin to walk and face the fears and, and take that step of faith and begin to draw closer to the Lord and get closer to him. Those are two options we have. Now, either way, in the end, Jesus was still in control and the storms left. But how do you want to ride out the storm of life? Do you want to ride it out saying, Lord, I, uh, don't you care? Where, where are you? Why have you put me in this situation? Or are you going to say, Lord, bid me come to you. Let me come to you. Let me draw, let me draw closer to you. Let me get stronger through this situation. And that's, 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 that's how we can react to anything. You know, Jesus, you know, created that. And that's another thing that it gets me too, is Jesus created both these storms. He, he said he, he knew what was going to happen. He knew what was going to be needed to, to help the disciples. And he knows my storm. And he knows what I need to go through to help me draw closer to him, to help me grow in him. You know, and, and, and it just, you know, another thing too, is that you don't go through your storm necessarily just for you. You could be going through it for someone else. And I and I jokingly say this, but that doesn't seem fair to me, right? Why should I have to be the example for you to learn? Why do I have to be the guinea pig, right? Why do I have to be the one to go through something just so you can increase your faith? I don't know. But the Lord's still in control. 
And in that situation, remember, it may not be for you. It may be for someone else. Even your, your actions should still be, Lord, big come. <coughs> Let me come to you. Let me draw closer to you. And so, and so we're going to go ahead and stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. <coughs> <coughs> invitation is is this this morning is how is how are you how are you handling the storm are you saying Lord bid me come or are you saying Lord don't you care don't you don't you don't you don't you care about me Lord and in, and in, and in both situations we've seen, the Lord was there with his disciples. He never once said, fellas, you guys are on your own. If you need to come forward this morning, you can. Valerie's going to play a verse. If you need to come forward again, you can um, as she plays. Mm -hmm.